The first moments after an alarm. Are you coming or what? It's probably just another drill. Are you gonna go? Yep. A critical time for action. Because most people's experience is limited to fire drills and false alarms, they may not take fire alarms seriously. The sense of urgency necessary for a successful evacuation is missing as they slowly, grudgingly leave their work site. In emergency situations, seconds count. The fire may be concealed, smoldering in the electrical system, spreading through the ductwork, across walls and in false ceilings. And then there's the most dangerous threat, smoke. Moving rapidly ahead of the flames, smoke can fill a building with poisonous, life-threatening fumes in minutes. Smoke rises, filling a space from the top down it makes it difficult to see and impairs your ability to think and move. In minutes, smoke first causes unconsciousness, then death. Smoke is the number one killer in fires. Fire wardens play a critical role in the safe, rapid evacuation of your building. Their knowledge and presence can make the difference between life and death. So what have you got? We've got a person in the West Darrell on the second Building floor. fire wardens are the communications link between the fire department, University Protective Services, and the floor wardens. They remain at their post by their designated fire alarm enunciator panel, note and record the location of the alarm, and will respond to the fire phones and any requests for assistance. Floor fire wardens assist in evacuation procedures and ensure that building fire wardens are kept informed with accurate information about fire conditions, trapped people, and the location of anyone remaining in the building. Okay, come on everyone, let's go at the front. When a fire alarm is activated, the University Control Center is automatically alerted. Hi, it's University of Alberta. <laughs> The alarm is passed by a direct line to the Municipal Fire Department Communication Center and University Protective Services. We are located the fire on the second floor of the administration building. Direct two-way radio communications links are established. A fire response team is immediately dispatched to the scene to provide assistance to the fire department. If you are a building fire warden, proceed immediately via the safest route to the main entrance and your designated panel to begin assessing the situation. Collect any information and be prepared to report to the fire department and protective services. You must wear your white hat. If you are a floor fire warden, proceed to your designated area to begin directing all occupants to the nearest, safest exit. Wear your red hat at all times. Well, hey, Lynn, time to go. Yes, I understand. I'm on an important call. I'll be out in just a moment. Yeah. If anyone resists leaving, make a note of the location and move on. Don't waste time arguing. Make note of the name of the person and their location to inform the building fire warden. I'll let them know. I'll shut the door on the way out. All doors leading to the corridor should be closed to slow the spread of fire. Check all washrooms by opening the door and calling out. Excuse me, we don't know where to go. Non-ambulatory persons are to be directed to a safe place, such as a fire-protected stairwell. Make a note of anyone left behind and where they are. Assign a runner to relay this information to the building fire warden to ensure the fire department is aware of people needing assistance. Once floor fire wardens have cleared their area, pass on any additional information about fire conditions, trapped people, or the location of anyone remaining in the building to the building fire warden before exiting the building. Sorry if I run in and grab something, I forgot. Prevent anyone from re-entering the building. Do not let anyone go back inside. I'm sorry. Okay. 
As the runners and floor wardens report in, the building fire warden consolidates all incoming information. It's important to verify that everyone in your area is accounted for. Report all relevant information to fire officials and then stand by to give information and assistance as needed. So what have we got? We've got a person in the West Darrell on the second floor in a wheelchair with an aide. Okay. And then we have a person in 120F who refuses to leave. Okay. Fire wardens do not take part in the firefighting and rescue operations. These are dangerous tasks best left to trained and properly equipped professionals. We've got the building. Can we have copies, uh, medical sectors? When the fire department is satisfied the emergency is over and leave, it still may not be safe to re-enter the building. Occupational health and safety teams may be required to perform additional investigations, such as air quality checks. Hi, so I've just spoken with environmental health and safety, and they've given the all clear for staff to come back in the building. Okay. Okay, so cool. let's go tell them. University Protective Services will confirm when it is safe to re-enter the building. Once notified, the building fire warden, using the fire phones, voice paging system, or the runners, will give an all clear. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to get your feedback on the evacuation yesterday. How did you At the end of any evacuation, floor wardens and the building fire warden will meet to go over what happened. Successes and problems should be recorded and presented to the University Fire Safety Division in a written report, along with any suggestions for improvements. As a member of the fire wardens program, you play a vital role in the safety and well-being of your university community. Your leadership and knowledge are key elements in the coordinated plan that allows us all the freedom of knowing that at the University of Alberta, we are prepared for survival.